Hi, my dear students. We are going to start with a new chapter, the structure of atom. First of all, we are going to learn the discovery of subatomic particles like electrons, protons and neutrons. Structure of atom. Discovery of subatomic particles. One discovery of electrons. Discovery of electrons. Michael Faraday and some other scientists studied the electric discharge of gases. After this, J.J. Thomson concluded all these experiments and conducted cathode ray tube experiment that led to the discovery of electrons. So, J.J. Thomson conducted cathode ray tube experiment CRT, cathode ray tube experiment that led to the discovery of electrons. The apparatus consists of a 40 centimeter long glass tube. That is what is called a discharge tube. It is connected to a vacuum pump. To vacuum pump. to pump out the gas inside the discharge tube. One electrode or one metal electrode is used here. It acts as cathode and another metal electrode is used in opposite end that acts as anode. See, this is cathode. And this is anode. When a gas is filled in the discharge tube and 10,000 voltage is applied, 10,000 voltage is applied at normal pressure, no electric discharge through the gas takes place. But when Pressure inside the discharge tube is reduced by pumping out the gas. Discharge through the gas takes place. That is, electric discharge through the gas takes place. When pressure is reduced to 10 raised to minus 4 atmosphere, when pressure is reduced to 10 raised to minus 4 atmosphere, the whole tube fills with a dark space and the side of the tube begins to glow with a green fluorescence. See, inside of the glass tube is coated with a fluorescent material like zinc sulfide. This glow or fluorescence is due to the bombardment of invisible rays emitted from cathode. These rays are invisible. I am going to represent them with the dotted lines. See, these rays that emit from cathode and travel towards anode are called cathode rays. They are actually invisible. So what are cathode rays? Cathode rays are the invisible rays emitted from cathode and traveling towards anode when a gas is subjected to very low pressure and high voltage. Let us learn some of the properties of cathode rays. First property. Cathode rays are emitted from emitted from 
cathode and travel towards anode they can cast shadow cast shadow of objects placed on their path of objects placed on their path placed on their path this shows that they travel in straight line they can cast shadow of objects placed on their path that means when we place an object here we get a shadow behind it from this it is clear that cathode rays travel in straight line third point they can rotate a paddle wheel they can rotate a paddle wheel paddle wheel placed on their paths placed on their paths their paths see consider this as a paddle wheel this paper wheel when i blow it from this direction see like this it gets rotated what happens here is that the particles in wind strike on the fins of the paddle wheel and they do work on it that is why it gets rotated so air contain material particles with the momentum or kinetic energy but when light falls on the paddle wheel it does not rotate like this so from this it is clear that cathode rays can rotate the paddle wheel placed on their path that means cathode rays contain material particles with a momentum mass into velocity or kinetic energy that is why the paddle wheel get rotated so this shows that they contain cathode rays contain material particles material particles with the momentum particles with the momentum or kinetic energy momentum or kinetic energy fourth point when we place a metal plate in the path of cathode rays then the metal plate gets heated what happens here is when cathode rays strike on the metal plate they do some work on the surface this causes a frictional effect and heating effect so cathode rays contain material particles with a momentum or kinetic energy so they can heat a metal plate placed on their path placed on their path this shows that they, this also shows that they contain material particles with the momentum they contain material particles with the momentum or kinetic energy then fifth point now what is the fifth point here see they are when passed through an electric field see like this cathode ray get deflected towards positively charged plates cathode rays get deflected towards positively charged plates that is cathode rays contain negatively charged particles that is why they get deflected towards positively charged plates next point they are affected by or deflected by a magnetic field this also shows that cathode rays contain negatively charged particles so they are deflected by magnetic fields and it shows that they contain negatively charged particles so the point the velocity of velocity of cathode rays cathode rays are smaller than light velocity of cathode rays smaller than light 
eight point. They can ionize gases through which they pass. They can ionize gases through which they pass. They can ionize gases through which they pass. Ninth point. They can penetrate through thin metallic foils. They can penetrate through thin metallic foils. Tenth point. They can produce. They can produce scintillation. Scintillation means twinkling. When they strike on suitable fluorescent materials. And this is the important cause of producing pictures in CRT TVs, cathode ray tube TVs. When an electron strike on the picture tube, in front of the picture tube, it will produce a grain. A large number of such grains of different intensity will produce a picture. That is the principle used in cathode ray tube TVs. Okay. Now, they can produce scintillation when they strike on fluorescent materials. Eleventh point. They can produce x-rays. They can produce x-rays when strike on suitable targets called anti-cathodes. See, J.J. Thompson found that the properties of cathode rays are independent of the nature of the gas used in the discharge tube or nature of the electrodes used in the discharge tube. He repeated the experiment using different gases and different electrodes. In all cases, he found that the properties of cathode rays are the same. That is, from this experiment, J.J. Thomson concluded that cathode rays contain negatively charged particles that are electrons or that are called electrons and the electrons are the universal constituents of all matter. That's all. That about the discovery of electrons. Now let us learn the determination of E by M or charge by mass ratio of electrons. J.J. Thomson determined E by M of the electron by conducting the cathode ray tube experiment. The apparatus used was as shown in the diagram. It consists of a bulb-like portion at one end, a narrow portion here, and then a wide portion like this. This end is like a hemisphere. Here, this part of the tube is coated with zinc sulfide. Here there is a cathode. There is an anode tube. The whole discharge tube is connected to a vacuum pump to pump out the gas inside. Cathode ray is produced 
by applying low pressure and high voltage cathode ray is made narrow by passing through this anode tube and then allowed to strike at the opposite end here a fluorescent spot is produced at A see cathode rays are invisible but from this fluorescent spot at A it is possible to determine that cathode rays are falling on this position now an electric field is applied using two plates like this one of which is positive and the other is negative under the influence of the electric field negatively charged cathode rays get deflected or deviated towards positively charged plate and the fluorescent spot is now shifted to B at this spot. Why? Because the ray get deflected under the influence of the electrofield. It get deviated towards the positively charged plate. Now, we are going to apply a magnetic field at right angles to the applied electrofield, like this. This is North Pole and this is South Pole. Under the influence of the magnetic field, the ray get deflected or deviated in this direction and now the fluorescent spot is shifted to C. Both electric field and magnetic field are at right angles to each other. Keeping both electric field and magnetic fields simultaneously and adjusting their strengths, that is, adjusting the strength of the electric field and magnetic field, it is possible to shift the fluorescent spot from C to A. That is, by adjusting the strengths, it is possible to shift the fluorescent spot from C to A. A back to A from C back to A now it is possible to determine E by M value of the electron using the formula capital E by H square R where capital E is the strength of the applied electric field capital H is the strength of the applied magnetic field R is the radius of the circular path taken by cathode ray it can be obtained from the design of the apparatus from this experiment jj thompson determined e by m of the electron or calculated e by m of the electron as 1.7588 into 10 raised to 11 coulomb per kilograms this is the E by M value of the electron. That is, E by M is equal to 1.7588 into 10 raised to 11 coulomb per kilograms. Discovery of charge and mass of the electron. R. A. Millikan discovered charge of the electron by conducting famous oil trope experiment. Discovery of charge and mass of the electron. R. A. Millikan conducted oil drop experiment. The apparatus consists of a tank like this, whose both ends are closed. The 
there are two metal plates like this this is maintained to positive and another metal plate here this is maintained negative here there is a mica window here there is a traveling microscope TMS an atomizer is used atomizer or sprayer is used to introduce oil droplet here oil is taken the atomizer contain a blower like this a fine spray of oil droplet is allowed at the top of the tank using the blower the oil droplets are electrically charged by passing x-rays x-rays now a charged oil droplet on or two charged oil droplets are allowed to enter into the space between these two plates see P1 and P2 now the oil droplet is viewed through the traveling microscope and it is observed in the eyepiece like this see this cross wire is graduated now we can see the oil droplet here together by switching a stopwatch now the time taken to travel the oil droplet from this place to this place is noted this is the distance traveled and the time is noted so knowing the distance traveled and the time it is possible to calculate the downward velocity now the plates are electrically charged so that the oil droplet will move upward against gravity the upward velocity is also determined in similar manner knowing downward and upward velocities of the oil droplet and some other parameters like density of the oil droplet viscosity of the medium and some other physical constants it is possible to calculate the charge of the oil droplet the charge of the oil droplet was found to be n into 1.602 into 10 raised to minus 19 coulombs that is q is equal to n into e see the charge of the oil droplet was, was always an integral multiple of 1.602 into 10 raised to minus 19 coulombs never it was fractional from this experiment he concluded that each oil droplet may absorb electrons from x-rays and the charge of the oil droplet depends on the number of electrons absorbed by each oil droplet that is why the charge of the oil droplet is always an integral multiple of 1.602 into 10 raised to minus 19 coulombs. The charge of the electron was assigned as 1.602 into 10 raised to minus 19 coulombs. This is the charge of the oil droplet and this is the charge of the electron. That is, the charge of the oil droplet was an integral multiple of 1.602 into 10 raised to minus 19 coulombs. That is the charge of the electron. See, this is the charge of the electron. Now, how can we calculate the mass of the electron? We know that E by M of the electron is equal to 1.7588 into 10 raised to 11 coulomb per kilograms. See, substituting the value of charge here, we can say that 1.602 into 10 raised to minus 19 coulombs 
divided by m is equal to 1.7588 into 10 rise to 11 coulomb per kilogram. See, therefore, m is equal to 1.602 into 10 rise to minus 19 coulombs. This divided by this. That is 1.7588 into 10 rise to 11 coulomb per kilogram. See, coulomb, coulomb get cancelled off. Kilogram comes in the numerator. Kilogram inverse coming the numerator as kilogram. So we get m is equal to that is mass of the electron is equal to 9.1 into 10 rise to minus 31 kilograms. This is the mass of the electron and this is the charge of the electron.